Tonight on the April 13th edition of Newswatch, President Donald Trump uses the most powerful non-nuclear bomb on an ISIS stronghold. And members of the Iowa State Greek community are facing sanctions. I have the latest in Cyclone Sports and the NBA playoffs. And it's a very warm spring-like pattern in the weather out there. We've got a lot of rain, but uh, some dry time coming up. We'll time all that out in your forecast. In the meantime, Newswatch starts now. Thanks for watching and have a good rest of your night and week. Stay classy, Cyclones. edition of Newswatch. I'm Coley Bergen. And I'm Brianna Campbell. Here are tonight's top stories. The U.S. military dropped a bomb in Afghanistan Thursday in efforts to hit an ISIS cave complex in the eastern part of the country. This is the largest non-nuclear bomb the U.S. has used in combat, which has given it the nickname the mother of all bombs. The massive ordnance air blast, or MOAB bomb, weighed in at 22,000 pounds and was developed in 2003. President Trump has deemed the bombing a success and stated that he authorized the military to carry out the bombing. A U.S.-led airstrike meant against the Islamic State in Syria killed 18 allied Syrian fighters. The strike, which was carried out on Tuesday near Tabqa, was meant to target ISIS fighters in the city. It instead turned out to be a position held by Syrian Democratic Forces, a group that has been fighting ISIS alongside the United States. U.S. Central Command issued a statement sending their condolences to the fallen SDF members, calling the incident tragic and that an investigation will be carried out in full. The 139th annual Easter Egg Roll will take place on Monday, April 17th, on the South Lawn of the White House. The Easter Egg Roll began in 1879 under the presidency of Rutherford B. Hayes. Traditionally, schools in the Washington, D.C. area are invited to bring students to the White House to participate in the event. The Trump administration almost missed the deadline to order the wooden eggs for, for the event. After a reminder tweet from the company that supplies the eggs, the White House put in a rush order to supply the main attraction for the time-honored tradition. President Trump signed legislation this morning that will cut federal funding from organizations like Planned Parenthood. The rule nullifies an Obama administration rule that prevented state and local governments from withholding federal funding for family planning services. The new measure aims to cut federal funding from clinics that perform abortions, a move that has been seen praised by conservatives and heavy backlash from progressives. The Iowa Senate passed legislation that will require voters in Iowa to produce government identification at the polls and will reduce the time period for early voting in future elections. Opponents of the bill call it a voter suppression bill that may leave some Iowans unable to cast their votes in elections. The bill will be sent to Governor Terry Branstad's office, where he is expected to sign it into law. Shipping giant UPS announced today that it will be moving operations from Des Moines to Rockford, Illinois. The company, which currently operates 13 flights per week out of Des Moines International Airport, will now base these flights to Chicago Rockford International Airport. The change is expected to affect 123 jobs in the Des Moines area, and UPS shipping services are expected to change in the metro. President Donald Trump's Winter White House Mar-a-Lago faced several health inspection violations. The private club and resort received 13 health and food safety violations after a visit in January, ranging from broken fridges and raw and undercooked fish. These violations were reported days before Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's visit to the club. The health department said that this was the highest amount of health violations for a business that requires a $200,000 initiation fee. Attorneys of Dr. David Dale, a United Airlines passenger that was beaten on an overbooked flight earlier this week, announced that Dr. Dale will sue the airline for his injuries. Videos of the incident where the staff were removing him violently from his flight went viral over social media, causing major backlash against the airline. According to his attorneys, Dale suffered two broken teeth, a broken nose, and a concussion from the altercation. Dr. Dale's lawyers have filed an emergency court request for United to preserve evidence for a hearing next Monday. United Airlines released a statement where they announced all passengers of Sunday's flight will have their tickets refunded. A 17-year-old girl was convicted of criminally negligent homicide following the death of a 16-year-old classmate in a Delaware school bathroom. A group of girls beat the victim, Amy Joyner Francis, to death in the school bathroom almost a year ago. In a non-jury trial, a judge found one of the girls guilty of homicide and misdemeanor conspiracy. 
Another girl was found guilty of conspiracy due to an online post stating, quote, we are going to get her. She is scared, end quote. The third girl was acquitted of conspiracy charges as she was seen in a cell phone video pulling one of the girls off of Joyner Francis. All of the girls were tried as juveniles. After the break, Ames Mayor Ann Campbell is announcing her retirement. And we'll have the latest in weather and sports. Stay tuned, you're watching Newswatch. Welcome back to Newswatch. The White Balloon Project was held this past Wednesday. Members of the suicide organization passed out white balloons to passing students on Central Campus. Around 7,000 Iowa State students suffer from a mental illness, so members of the organization wanted to bring awareness to the university and promote mental health. Four Greek chapters have been put on probation through the university. Alpha Phi and Chi Omega, two sororities on campus, have been put on conduct probation until the beginning of the 2017 fall semester. Sigma Pi, a fraternity, was put on interim probation, and Phi Kappa Theta, a fraternity, is on conduct probation until the beginning of the 2017 fall semester. All chapters were placed on probation for misuse of alcoholic beverages and violation of conditions of recognition. Phi Kappa Theta responded to ISU TV with this statement. The men of Phi Kappa Theta acknowledge that we have violated university and IFC policy, and we are taking these sanctions as an opportunity to improve our chapter. This includes a complete revision of risk management policies within our chapter, a reevaluation of how we are living our chapter's values in our daily lives, and a commitment to building a stronger relationship with both the university and the Interfraternity Council. Signed, Chapter President Davis Arbogast. All chapters are expected to review their risk management policies. Alpha Phi, Chi Omega, and Sigma Pi did not respond to contact from ISU TV. Lincoln Way is looking at some serious changes. At a council meeting Tuesday, it was decided the major road on Iowa State's campus needs to be a safer place for students. After the devastating events that took place last year between a Styride and a student, the city decided it was time to do something about it. The plan could take up to 15 years, but the university is prepared. This this semester, 400 veterinary students are taking a clinical skills lab that help them gain nearly life-like experience. Gone are the days of practicing stitching on banana peels and cow charms. Iowa State students have access to far more realistic options. There are models of dogs, pigs, and horses, even a life-size model of a cow. All these allow veterinary students to practice medical procedures before working on real living animals. After 25 years of public service and three terms, Ames Mayor Ann Campbell announced her retirement Wednesday morning. Campbell served for 16 years on the Ames City Council and has spent the last 12 years as the mayor of the city. The moment she is proudest of during her tenure is seeing the city of Ames come together and fixing up the town during the 2010 floods. Campbell will officially step down from the office at the end of the year after a special mayoral election for her replacement. Philanthropy season is in full swing for the Iowa State Greek community. Every chapter has a specific service cause they fundraise for. Some philanthropies have already occurred, such as Mac Attack for St. Jude's Children's Hospital and Pi Fi Taco Time for Children's Literacy, and Chick fil A Fee for Women's Heart Health is happening tonight. Upcoming philanthropies include Family Fair for CASA and USO on April 19th, and Let's Talk About Alzheimer's on April 18th. Several philanthropic events include food, but others include sporting events and games. Tickets for philanthropies can be purchased from the members of the hosting chapters. The student organization Dub H is celebrating 15 years on Iowa State's campus. I had the opportunity to check out the club myself. Friday marked the 15th anniversary of Dub H being a club on Iowa State's campus. Dub H is an acronym for Double H, which stands for hip hop. So what do they do in this club? It is a dance organization that is for everyone and anyone. Um, we're all focused about just coming together and having fun and enjoying the one thing that we all have in common, which is dance. Um, we have people who have danced their entire lives, and then you have people like me who didn't start dancing until they were in college. Dub H has around 500 members, making it the largest student-run club on campus. Dub H consists of students, as well as alumni and members of the Ames community. My favorite part of Dub H is probably the people. I really like going to practice every day and like kind of just leaving everything at the door and having fun with my friends. At the end of every semester, Dub H puts on a performance for approximately 600 audience members. 
You know, I actually thought the performance was really cool. I wasn't quite sure what to expect just because I hadn't, you know, been to one of these before, but it was actually really interesting. Uh, overall, I'd say my favorite part was honestly just how many people were involved. I was really shocked by that. I just, it was for something I had never heard of before on campus, there was actually just a ton of people here, and I thought that was really cool to see how many people got out and got involved in it. For more information on DubH, check out the club's website or the student organization database. For ISU TV with Zach Williamson, I'm Coley Bergeron. What's new with sports, Haley? Well, Coley, we have the results of ICU gymnastics and softball as well as NBA playoffs. Welcome back from the break. I'm Haley McPike, and here's the latest in Iowa State and national sports. It's a busy weekend for Cyclone Sports. Tomorrow, the gymnastics NCAA National Championships will go live at noon in St. Louis, Missouri, with the final all-around score of 39.175. Our very own Haley Young landed a spot at nationals. The junior will be competing as an all-around competitor in the championship tomorrow. Cyclone Nation wishes you the best, Haley. ISU's men's golf team will head up to Iowa City this weekend for the annual Hawkeye Invitational. The competition will take place this Saturday, April 15th and Sunday, April 16th at Think Fine Golf Course. The 14 teams will play 36 holes on Saturday and 18 holes on Sunday. The Invitational will start at 9 a.m. both days. Tomorrow, the Iowa State softball team will take on the Cowgirls of Oklahoma State in a three-game series at the Cyclone Sports Complex right here in Ames. Because of the weather, the schedule has been adjusted. The teams will play a doubleheader on Friday beginning at 11 a.m. On Saturday, the girls' final game of the series will begin at noon. Good luck, ladies. And to top off this busy weekend for the clones, the ISU track team is competing in the Brian Clay Invitational today and tomorrow in Azusa, California. Cyclone Zach Black... Dan Kurse and Christian DeLago will all run in the 1,500 meter run. The trio ran in the Stanford Invitational just two weeks ago. DeLago led the three runners with a time of roughly 3 minutes and 45 seconds, making that his personal best. Good luck to all of the Cyclones competing this weekend. The bracket has been set for the NBA playoffs. In the East region, we have the number one seed Boston Celtics playing the Chicago Bulls. The returning champion Cleveland Cavaliers against the Indiana Pacers the Toronto Raptors facing the Milwaukee Bucks and the Washington Wizards up against the Atlanta Hawks. In the West region, the number one seed Golden State Warriors are set to play the Portland Trail Blazers, the San Antonio Spurs against the Memphis Grizzlies, the Houston Rockets against the Oklahoma City Thunder, and the LA Clippers against the Utah Jazz. The first round of games start this Saturday up until the end of April. Now that's it for sports. How's the weather looking tonight, Zane? Well, Haley, if you've been outside, you probably notice it feels very mild out there. We're still in the upper 50s and 60s across the northern half of the state, low 70s uh, to the south. As we go through tonight into tomorrow, we're going to move down into the mid 50s overnight by tomorrow morning, up back in the 60s. But a lot of chances of rain tomorrow and into Saturday. We'll time those out coming up in the forecast. Welcome back. It's mid-April and it's very mild uh, temperature-wise out across the state of Iowa. These are the highs we got up to, up to today. Uh, northern parts of the state, upper 50s and 60s. To the south, Des Moines, 79 degrees, almost 80. That's about 20 degrees above normal for this time of year, so quite impressive for mid-April. Right now here in Ames, uh, 64 degrees. Winds are out of the east-northeast at 14 miles an hour. Most of us out there in the 50s uh, and 60s, lower 70s off to the south. There's warmer air across the southern half of the state of Iowa. That's ahead of this system. These clouds are advancing from the southwest. Those are part of a system off to our south. There's a warm front draped across uh, south, southern Iowa. That's why it's so much warmer down there right now. And those clouds are advancing ahead of it. And then there's a trough of low pressure across parts of Colorado, Kansas, and Oklahoma. And this is where our chances of rain is going to come through tomorrow uh, into Saturday. So we're going to time that out on Futurecast here. Here's tonight. Trying to depict some storms coming through already. That's a little bit ahead of what we're thinking right now. But through the overnight hours, uh, uh, excuse me, clouds and showers move through through the state early into tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning we probably won't have so much rain, mostly just some clouds and some fog. And then later on Friday, stronger chances of stronger storms that will move through ahead of uh, some drier air that will move in Friday night into Saturday. And then Saturday in the afternoon, there's another chance of stronger storms that will move in from the northwest 
into the state of Iowa, uh, and that'll be our last chance of rain for the weekend. So estimated rainfall totals across the state, mostly quarter to a half an inch as it slowly advances here across most of Iowa is what we're thinking right now. This could adjust a little bit either way the next couple days, but a decent soaker out there for the most of the state. Lows tonight, very mild, uh, 50s, upper 50s to the south for low temperatures. Our average low is only about 40, so very mild air out there. Highs tomorrow, 60s across the northern part of the state, low 70s uh, to the south, so very warm again. Tonight here in Ames, low of 54 degrees, mostly cloudy. That chance of rain will come through uh, late tonight, e early into tomorrow morning. Winds will be out of the east, 5 to 10. Tomorrow, high is 69 degrees, mostly cloudy. Uh, rain chances early in the morning, stronger chances of actual like thunderstorm style storms later on in the day. Your seven day forecast, there's those chances of rain Friday and Saturday, high 72 on Saturday. Sunday, Easter, dry and sunny after that cold front moves through, high 67. And we stay in an active pattern though. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, chances of rain the whole time, but otherwise very seasonable temperatures, highs in the 60s into most of next week. Stay with us, we have much more News Watch coming up. Welcome back to News Watch. Catch me in jail, how about I? The notorious star of the viral video, Danielle Brigoli, appeared in court this morning to face felony charges. The teen faces charges such as grand theft, filing a false police report, and fraud in Delray Beach, Florida. Brigoli's parents are also in the midst of a custody battle where her father, Ira Pe Peskowitz, excuse me, wishes to restore custody of Brigoli to keep her away from Hollywood publicists and reality show offers. Brigoli was ordered by the judge to return to court on April 26 for further trial. NBC's The Voice has never been just a party for two, but here's something that might get you good. Shania Twain will be appearing on the show as a mentor to finalists in the current season. The Any Man of Mine singer announced on Twitter she will be appearing on the singing competition in April. Does that impress you much? Twain is known for her country hits such as Whose Bed Have Your Boots Been Under, From This Moment On, and the iconic Man I Feel Like a Woman. The buzz surrounding Twain's guest appearances definitely proves she's still the one. Police in East Palestine, Ohio, were in for a surprise this Sunday when they received calls about a young, unlicensed driver heading to McDonald's. Officers responded to several calls after an eight-year-old boy stole his parents' car to take his four-year-old sister and himself to McDonald's. The boy navigated railroad tracks, multiple intersections, and other traffic, all the while maintaining the speed limit and following other laws. The children were picked up after a family friend noticed them driving nearby and no charges were filed. The eight-year-old stated he learned how to drive through watching YouTube videos. I tell you, Bri, I can't blame him. Sometimes you just gotta get your McNugget on. <laughs> I'm more of a Culver's person, but you know, I gotta admire his determination. And that's all for tonight's edition of Newswatch. Check back next week for more Iowa State news, weather, and sports. Have a good night, Ames. Stay tuned for Ames tonight.